Very good. Randy, um, Tiger Lou. Just want to stay in the atmosphere for a minute, everybody. That was a beautiful song. You know, it's fitting that we celebrate the 4th of July this week, uh, the birth of a nation. And when you think back about how we won our independence, I don't really believe it was independence, but it was done through the sacrifice of so many. You know, uh, I give myself away when you want to do something great, maybe birth something new. It takes um, a real big price and, and, um, and love is a real big price to pay. You know, they had love for their family, love for truth. Some of them just love for truth. You know, love for truth will drive you. And you think about the sacrifices that were made. I think about the, um, the ones who had wealth. They came over here and they had their lands and they had their wealth and they, they could have remained wealthy um, wealthy families and, and they gave it all away. They, not only did they give away their wealth, not only did they give away their, their, their mansions and their land, but they gave their sons and they gave their daughters and, and they, they gave everything, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, even as we reflect on, on, on this this week and, and, and the dependence or the independence of our nation, um, I would like to um, really uh, think about not really Independence Day. I think perhaps as you look into your bulletins today, I think perhaps a better title could be Interdependence Day because I really think that is what happened uh, so many years ago. It was interdependence that made us strong. It was interdependence that drove us, that made us go beyond what our human capacities could really let us go. You know, when I look at, um, you know, I look at uh, um, the definitions, I wanted to read a couple of definitions to you as we begin. And, um, you know, interdependence. First of all, you know, we, we, we call the 4th of July Independence Day, the birth of a nation. And uh, by definition, if I may read you a definition, by definition, independence means not depending upon another for livelihood or, or substance. It means to be self-sufficient, self-supporting, self-sustaining, self-reliant. Um, and I find that definition not to fit the day, nor the cause, nor the birth of a nation. I believe a better title would be interdependence. Um, not dependence, but interdependence. Dependence means that you rely on somebody, it's one-sided. You know, in, the dependence means that what one side gives, but interdependence means that you mutually need each other. It's a mutual dependence. That's why there's a difference between dependence and interdependence. It means you need each other equally. And the truth of the matter is we're built that way. We're created that way. We're created to need each other desperately, and we don't know it. We don't know it. We don't know it. We live as if we're independent so many times. And none of us are. The fact that you're living and breathing says that somebody brought you to the earth. <laughs> and somebody raised you and sustained you, gave you what was needed, that you may have the audacity when you grow up to say that I am independent. <laughs> Give it a few years, that goes away too. <laughs> this false state of dependence, independence, not only, it's a false state and only lasts so long, amen? But interdepend interdependence, it's, it's the state of being dependent upon another, and it is absolutely mutual dependence. And I would say that, that Independence Day is not the birth of a nation. I would say that Interdependence Day, rather, is the birth of a nation. Because even when you look at the, 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 the records in history in regard to the American Revolution, the Americans didn't fight the revolution by themselves. You know that Spain helped us, and France helped us, and they were mighty nations. America wasn't a mighty nation. As a matter of fact, what do they say? It, perhaps it was the, um, I saw it in a movie somewhere, that it was the, uh, the French Navy that uh, uh, defeated the Brits at um, Yorktown that ended the war. So you, you cannot say that it's independent. You must say it's interdependence. And I would say 
greater than our reliance and interdependence upon Spain and France as a nation, I would say the interdependence was on the neighbors and the friends. It was upon each other. I would say, I would say that we relied upon each other. Um, once again, you know, you read the history records. Wasn't the militia that was a real force to be reckoned with in the American Revolution? Why? Because it was neighbors. It was family. It was, it was countrymen, not, not soldiers. It was countrymen coming together because they loved each other. They cared for each other. They needed each other. Aha. Uh -huh which caused the birth of a nation. You want the birth of a nation, you want the birth of something new, you, it has to be done absolutely with interdependence. So I, I would like to, to, to title our conversation today as Interdependence Day, the birth of a nation. And if I could, I'd like to read from the gospel, uh, 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 the book of Galatians. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn there, but I, I think I'm gonna read a different translation. I'm gonna read the New Living Translation, I believe. Chapter 6 in Galatians. And um, I think, actually, I think this is the Message Bible. And I, and I liked it, so, you know, I wanted to read it today. So, so the Message Bible, it, it says this. It says, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore them. And I love this. Saving your critical comments for yourself. It says, you might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. You know, the roles do change quickly, don't they? You know, so let us not be so quick to judge, amen? But quick to help, because the roles do change in life frequently, amen? Yes, they do. Therefore, when you see a brother or a sister in fault, in weakness, in temptation, eagerly help them. Eagerly help them with love and kindness, knowing that we will need the same soon. <laughs> Amen. It is the truth. Therefore, therefore, it says, it says, you might be needing forgiveness yourself someday. It says, stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. And I think the main part of the message, maybe in your translation, it says, bear each other's burdens. Amen, everybody? Scripture teaches us Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, the teachings of Jesus, teaches us to bear one another's burdens, and therefore you shall complete or fulfill the law of Christ. Can you believe that in that setting it says bearing each other's burdens fulfills the law of Christ? Not just taking care of yourself, but taking care of others. And you know what? I might, I might drop my bundle picking up yours, you know? I might drop 10 things that, that, that had to be done to make sure I got yours, but that's okay. Because the Lord says there's going to be two people behind me picking up the things that I drop, picking up your stuff, right? But we have, we have to believe in it. It's, it's true. You know, I know we don't live that way and you know, we don't see it, but it is true. It's, it's how we live. You know, whether you see it or not, it's true. Whether you see it or not, it's true that um, other people have helped you in this life more than you could ever count or remember. It's true, when you thought you were your strongest, there was 10 people behind you that, that gave you the opportunity to say, I am strong. Amen. Yeah. I believe maybe there was 10 people that laid down their lives so you could dare stand up and say, I am strong. I believe there were those who laid down their lives before you that you could stand up and say, I am rich. Huh. As if I has any business in that sentence. Amen, everybody. Interdependence. We're designed that way. We're built that way. We affect one another. We help one another. We love one another. Even though you don't say it with your mouth or believe it with your mind, it is the truth. It's a spiritual law, not a natural one. Therefore, if your natural body cannot comprehend it, it does not matter. It still exists and holds the whole world together. Remember that song they sang a whole long time ago? We are the world. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson and his part. And isn't it fascinating? that you, you hear these spiritual concepts, you know, on a world stage like that, and that, that, that we belong to each other. You, you, know, you ever go back and just listen to the words of that song? It's so, it's so God, and it's so true. Amen. So therefore, bear one another's burdens. And it says, if you think you're too good for that, you are badly deceived. Once again, the deception comes just in not knowing it. 
And, you know, I, I must say that I think we all have times in our life, or maybe it's the culture or, or it's our natural world that teaches us that we're supposed to be independent. We're supposed to be strong. And it's okay, strong is part of life, but so is weakness. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes we want to be strong and independent, and, and sometimes you get to a place in life, and, and usually it's through pain, that you say, I don't need anyone. I don't need your help, don't need your money. Huh, hear that one a lot. It's fine, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't need you. And if, we don't, if those words don't come out of our mouth, it, it's, it's a life that we live. But we're trained, that, this, is no, this, is, this is just awareness, if you will. Because I think we're, we're trained this way. We're trained this way to be strong and independent. Um, and we think that in our, in our culture, in our teaching, we think that it's weak to be dependent. And it's weak to rely on someone else. And, and I, I think at times, don't you? Does that, am I the only human being in the house, man? You know, it's like, I don't need help. I'm strong. I can take care of it. But you see, you know, that's not strength. That's weakness. Because, you know, if I, if, I, if I can be real with you, anybody want to be real for a minute? You're in the church house. This is the only house you get, get to be real, man. Um, you know, usually it's, um, it's pain and sorrow that brings us to those statements. It's pain and it's experience, jaded experiences that bring us to a place that says, I don't need you. I don't need your help. I'm fine. Isn't it the truth? And you can say those words, but they're still not true. Because there's 10 people behind you. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the strong one that says, I don't need you. It's rather the weak one that says that because we are tied to our fears and our bondage and we're locked behind our own bars and we don't know it. I would say strength is just the opposite. You know, we only say that because we're weak and afraid, I must say. Can I get a witness on that one? I say that because we're weak and afraid. We're afraid of not having, we're afraid of failing as if I didn't, I wasn't able to provide, I wasn't able to do, I wasn't able to be there. And it's, 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 our, it's our weakness. But I would say, you know, interdependence, I must say, interdependence, of course, it exposes us to hurt and pain. You know, and sometimes, you, you know, it's our hurt and pain that causes us to say, I don't need you, I'm fine. But interdependence, it, it'll expose us to hurt and pain, to understand that we absolutely need someone because the person that you need, some of the people that you need, will fail you. Anybody live life? Anybody real out there? Interdependence exposes us to hurt and pain. Yes. If I don't rely upon you, you can't hurt me. But when I rely upon you and then you don't show up, it's like, bam. When I needed you and you weren't there, now it hurts. When it was my birthday and nobody showed up for my birthday, now. <laughs> I don't need you anyway. Keep your rotten gifts. I don't want a gift from you anyway. I don't need your gifts. They stink. <laughs> but that's pain speaking, isn't it? And love is so big. And love is so expensive. Love is so expensive. And love will cost you everything. And love will expose you to hurt and pain. When you allow yourself maybe just to say to yourself, I do love you and I do need you. I do want you. Uh -huh. And then when that fails you, you will be exposed to that. But it will only fail you for a moment because love will not fail. Can I get a witness from somebody? The Bible says there's these three things that remain. Faith. Hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. Huh. Love will never fail us. Love will hurt us. <laughs> but love will never fail us. Amen. Yeah. That is the truth. So I do believe that it's interdependence. It's opening ourselves to real independence. And, and, and I must say, I think God is speaking to us. I think God is speaking to us. He's speaking to the strong in the room. Are there any strong in the room? Now you've been, <laughs> oh, I'm not, no, not me. I'm interdependent. I'm not strong. I'm definitely interdependent over here. <laughs> Are there any strong in the room? Because interdependence, it's, it's, it's not a move for the weak. 
mm -mm -mm, not a move for the weak. Because so much pain comes from loving people. Is that the truth? Yeah, that's right. So therefore, you know, even, even as you look at life itself, it seems like those that we love hurt us the most. Isn't that always the way? Those that we love hurt us the most. But I think God is here to comfort us saying it's supposed to be that way. It's, it's, supposed, it's called interdependence. Um, it will cause pain, it will cause sorrow, but therefore I say love is not for the weak. Uh -huh. Love is not for the weak. Interdependence is not for the weak. It is the ones we love that will hurt us the most. But when I, when I think about that and I say that, what about the teachings of Christ where Christ would say something like this? He'd say, um, love your enemies. Do good to those who hurt you. How about this? God doesn't tell you to love your family because some of, for some of you that's a big chore as it is. <laughs> I'll love them when I feel like loving them and when they love me back. They don't love me back, they're going to get it. Anyway, what about when God says, well, Christ says, no, 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 I'm not telling you to love your friends, your family, the ones whom you like. How about when the Lord teaches us when Jesus Christ Sermon on the Mount he teaches us the teachings of Christ he says love your enemies love your enemies well that opens up a bigger door if I'm supposed to love my enemies the door just got bigger to my pain because they hate me as it is what? brother Franco you asked me today do I have any enemies <laughs> If I am so, isn't it an interesting, sir, that you asked that question today? So if I am supposed to love my enemies, hmm, first of all, I have a hard time loving the ones I'm supposed to love. Amen. You know, Phil's a real chore. And, well, I got a witness in the room. But happy birthday <laughs> this week. Truthfully, right, everybody? Listen, man, it's a chore just to love the ones we're supposed to love. That's a chore. Um, love your enemies. That just opens up a whole new world. Because my enemies want to hurt me. They're just waiting for a moment to see my weakness. They want, they want blood in the water. And I want to give them blood. I'll never give them blood in the water. I'll never show my, I, I hardly show my family weakness. You think I'm going to show my, my enemies my weakness? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'll tell you what this is, man. It's the birth of a nation. The Lord wants us to birth the kingdom upon this earth. You think the earth is a mess? Yeah, yeah. Well, we need something drastic. And love is the strongest thing we got. But it's the most expensive. It's the most expensive. You can keep all your money, your cars and influence, but love is the most expensive thing. And that will really birth a nation. And it will start in small groups, maybe the group that you live in, live with. And maybe by the grace of God, we can expand that to actually love our enemies, amen? because that leaves a room for a whole lot of hurt. And yet, let me say this now, let me say this now, yet this is truly how we lay down our lives for each other. It, it, it's, it's a laying down of your life when, when, when you truly love someone, even while they're hurting you. Have you been in that situation? Everybody. Amen. Everybody? Have you been called to love somebody? Yes. I mean, just look at your family. To love someone even while they're hurting you? I think perhaps the hardest thing is to love somebody who doesn't love you back. You know what that is? That's laying down your life. That's laying down your life. It's loving, buddy. It's loving somebody who, let me say, seemingly, okay? Is that okay? Can we say seemingly? Because I don't believe that they don't love you. I believe they do. Who seemingly does not love you back. 
And then your response to that is, what's your response? You keep loving them. And you ready? No, we ain't ready. Your love doesn't change. Nothing will change your love for that person. Even if they don't love you back and even if they hurt you. Huh. How about that? How about that? These are the teachings of Jesus Christ. It will cost you your soul. But we do have a promise that we will reap what we sow. Yes. And if you will sow, sow one soul, your own, you will reap many souls. Amen. If you will lay down your life, huh, you will save many lives. Yes. Now I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. Can you do that? And myself, I say, not only can I not do that, I don't want to do that. And even when you get to a certain point in life, you're saying, I've had enough pain. I don't want to. And don't we go, <laughs> grow to a place where you don't have to anymore? I would say, rather, I don't think we have truly loved yet. I don't think we have truly loved yet. Amen, everybody. Yeah. So... You know, even in Galatians here, where it says this does fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah, that's right. But you see, let me, let me follow up then. I have to follow up on the, the remainder of the passage. And I think the remainder of the passage, it starts in verse 7. Now, this might be in a, a version you know. It says, it says, do not be, see, be deceived, everybody. God is not mocked. What a man sows or what a man, what a man reaps a man will reap what he sows. Whoever sows, whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to, sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. So the promise is this, everybody. If you will love unconditionally, if you will lay down your life, if you will give your soul to this interdependence, if you will, it says that you will reap what you sow. Although in the moment it seems as if you are not reaping. Can I get a witness from somebody? Amen. I know in the moment it does not seem to be very fruitful. Rather, it seems to be painful. I say it is not over yet. Amen. It's not over yet. For you will reap what you sow. And therefore it says endure to the end. Because it ain't over yet. And I believe that you are touching lives in a magnificent way. But you just can't see it in the external realm. I believe that the soul of a person is so deep. And I believe the only thing that can touch a soul is love. And you cannot deny it. And when you love someone... It does affect them. It changes them. Although on the surface there's nothing but hardness. That seed penetrated that hard ground. Because the word of God is true and everything else is a lie. Yes. Love is the only powerful and effective weapon. It is the most expensive but is the most effective. And therefore, the Bible backs it up and says, you will reap what you sow. If you sow love, you will get it back. Amen. You will get it back. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There are four scriptures that says, huh. let us not become weary in doing good. That's a great follow-up. Sometimes I don't know what you want to say after things like that. Sometimes you just want to curse. It's like I got to do this more. <sighs> Forgive me, but just just read in your minds is all. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> well, never mind. I can, that's a bad trail to go down. But it says this. It says, "Let us not become weary in doing good." Okay, that helps me. Does it help you? 
because my reward is not from man, it is from God. Let us not be weary in doing good, because what does it say? My Bible says, for at the proper time, in due season, we will reap a harvest. Doesn't, not, not, not a little sprout. You're going to reap a harvest, everybody. A harvest of what? What you need most? Yeah. Yeah, what you need most. Lord says, you sowed one seed, I will give you a harvest. You sowed your tears, I shall give you a river of love. Because you will reap a harvest if we, is it, can anybody got a Bible there? What does it say? If we what? Nobody got Bibles. What, what's the rest of that verse? Thank you. Who, who played along with me? God bless you, sir. Everyone else is just tormenting me. I got to love them, but they torment me. <laughs> You'll reap a harvest if you what, everybody, if you do not give up. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, it's not over, everybody. <laughs> There's a therefore. My mother would always say, if there's a therefore, find out what it's there for. <laughs> she knew that we were slow. Phil more than I, but she knew that we were slow. <laughs> Just saying. Therefore, as we have opportunity, <laughs> let us do good to whom? All people. All people. Let us do what? Good. Let us do what? Good, let us do what? Good, let us do what? Good. I'm saying that because I need that. I don't know about you. It's like I can feel it in my soul. Do good, do good, do good, do good, do good. Not because, you know, it's, it's like I can feel it in my soul. It's like, it's like that's the answer. That's the answer. Do good, do good, do good. Uh -huh. To all people, uh, for those who belong to your family and, and those who don't especially to those who belong to your family. Okay, right? Amen, everybody? Amen. Yeah, okay, amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. So, you know, and even in regard to interdependence, I want to shock you and again. Mostly, I want to shock the strong. Any strong in the house? I know I asked that, but any strong in the house? Still no, st okay, okay, sister. <laughs> But you're also weak. I'm going to get you out of this one. <laughs> we are weak and we are strong. Uh, so Christ was teaching us interdependent living. You ready for this one? My goodness. Here we go. Okay. Luke chapter 9. Um, I'm going to read out of a different kind of translation again. Let's see. Luke chapter 9. So it says one day Jesus called together his 12 disciples. And it says this. He gave them power and authority. He gave those, everybody wants power and authority. We all in this life, we want power and authority. Okay, good. He gave them power and authority to cast out demons and heal all of diseases. You know how you heal all of diseases and you cast the demons out of this life? It's through interdependent living. He's going to say this. I'll tell you how you're going to do it. Uh -huh. He says he sent them out. And he said, tell everyone about the kingdom of God. Heal the sick. He says this. He says, take nothing for your journey. He instructed them, don't take a walking stick. I guess that one was for you, Pop. Don't take a walking stick. <laughs> a traveler's bag. Food. For those of you who don't understand what a purse is, it says, don't take money. Or even a change of clothes. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake its dust from your feet. This is teaching us interdependent living. Now, my brother Phil, I would say, you and I, I would just you know, have a conversation with me and you. 
listen, man, I'm not comfortable. Now, I know my wallet's not as big as yours, but lately it's okay, I'll be honest. <laughs> I ain't going anywhere without my wallet. I ain't going anywhere without my wallet. Because I'm a provider, I'm strong, I'm able. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> he said, don't take it. Hmm. Don't take your wallet. Don't take your walking stick. Ha. Huh. Because then I, I need you. I need you to buy me a drink. I need you to buy me a lunch. I don't have anything. Uh -huh. I need you. We're, we're being taught to depend on people. Yeah. And the world doesn't teach that. Jesus is teaching me to depend on the people around you. Because that's strength. Amen. Because that's love. It's teaching me to, to ask somebody. Because they don't know I have nothing. So sometimes, you know, you got to, God forbid we ask somebody for help, right? If they offer it, fine. God forbid we ask. You don't know I, ha I don't have my wallet. You don't know I don't have a place to stay. Can I stay at your, I'm just, this is <laughs> easy. <laughs> but, you know, can I stay at your place? I got no place to live, man. You got, you got some place where I could sleep? How about you being that person? We always want to provide the housing and provide the money and provide the meal. What if you had to ask for it? What if you needed somebody desperately? Jesus is teaching us interdependent living. Well, He's saying, I know you know how to give. Uh, can you be humble enough to let somebody give you? Yeah. Can you be, can you depend upon, because the reality is, we do need each other. We just think we don't. We think the money was put in our pocket by us. It was put there by God. And he'll burn it up just the same. And he's teaching us to, to, to depend upon each other and to need each other desperately, desperately for a drink of water, for a meal, for a roof. And that's what he's teaching. And then, and then you know what he says in, in, in the same passage? He says, it doesn't mean, my goodness. It doesn't mean you're going to get what you need. He says there's going to be towns that's going to refuse you. You're going to go to some places, and they're not going to give you a drink. And they're not going to give you a meal. And they're not going to give you a place to stay. It doesn't mean that it's all going to unfold before you. It says, I want you to be dependent on people, and sometimes people will fail you. Can you handle that? I don't know. Can you handle that? Put all your strength, leave it, leave it home. And depend upon everybody else. And then God says this. And then I'm going to cause them to fail you. Really? Ha! I didn't need him in the first place. I didn't need him. Or at least that lie told me I didn't need him. I always needed him. I just thought I didn't. And he's going to tell me to depend upon the people around me. And then he says this. You ready? Yeah. And now they're going to fail you. That's love. It's pain. And what does God say? What does Jesus say after that? We, we have to know the heart of Jesus to interpret scripture. If you know the heart of man, then you will. This is a very ugly book. It's an ugly book. Ugly. Hurtful. But if you know the heart of Christ of God, it's beautiful. He says, shake the dust off your feet. He says, don't let it affect you. It's going to be all right. Don't, 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 take the, don't be jaded. Don't take it with you. Uh -huh. He says, go to the next town. They'll help you. That ain't over yet. Isn't that, that that's, that's my God. That's the gospel. He says, yeah, shake it off. It's okay. It's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Go depend upon the next group. And then if not the next group, then the, and he said, go, go from town to town. But he says this, he says, whether they accept you or whether they don't accept you, they will know this. Whether they help you or they don't help you, they will know this. They will know this. What will they know? That the kingdom of heaven was nigh them. 
because they will have experienced the kingdom of heaven. Whether they play or don't play, <laughs> whether they love you or don't love you, when they love you back, it's the kingdom. And when they don't love you back, they felt it. They know it. The Bible says that they will know that the kingdom of heaven was nigh them. Amen. They will have experienced the kingdom of heaven because you were strong enough. Nah, yeah, love is strong. To be dependent upon them, to need them, to make yourself weak. Uh -huh. Is that interesting? Yeah, it's interesting. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is true love. This is interdependence, if you will. Now, interdependence is beautiful. Not dependence, everybody. We're not dependent. We're interdependent. The truth of the matter is we desperately need each other. Yes. I know we act like we don't. Yes. But we do. That's the only way we get through this life. And you know what I find interesting? So this is Luke. I'm going to close with this here. So that's Luke chapter 9. He sends out the 12, right? He says, I want you to go do this, what's never been done before. I want you to live in a way that you have not lived before. He says, I want you to live in a way you have not lived before. You dare try it? I don't know. You dare try it? And he says this, he says then, and I, was, I had to read it twice because um, I read it in chapter 9, and then I went back to chapter 10, and chapter 10 says the same thing. I had to go back and touch, I, I'm going to open my Bible. I've been opening this thing in a long time. <laughs> well, because we use computers. <laughs> so I went to 10, and then it says the same thing. It says, but he's speaking to a different audience. He says, after this, the Lord appointed 72. So first it was the 12, but now he points to 72. But then he says the same thing. He says, and he sent them ahead, two by two, right? You know the story, sent them two by two. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly that the Lord of the harvest sends out laborers into the field. And he says, go your way. Behold, oh my goodness, it just gets worse. I am sending you as lambs in the midst of wolves. They are wolves, man. They are wolves. They will eat you up and spit you out, man. Who are they? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. The lost. The needy, the deceived, that's the they. The ones who desperately need you, they're the ones who are the wolves. The ones who need you most. Okay. Okay. I don't always like being a lamb, do you? I'm, I'm just, this one conversation. Phil, do you? I don't always like being a lamb. I don't know if I ever like being a lamb. Sometimes I can do it. What about you? Because <laughs> a lamb seems weak. It's like we're supposed to show strength. Remember this. There's nothing stronger than love. Yes. Nothing stronger than love. So he says, I send you as lambs to the wolves. And then he says the same thing, right? Carry no money bag. No knapsack. Oh, I'm supposed to say knapsack? It says knapsack in my Bible. That's a modern word. That's a prophetic word. <laughs> no sandals. And greet no one on the road in whatever house you enter. Mm -hmm. It says the same thing. But it wasn't 12 this time, it was 72, so I guess, I guess it works. <laughs> I guess love works. And I think what we're seeing here is Interdependence Day, the birth of a nation. What is the nation? Oh my goodness, it's the God nation. The Bible says this, uh, in closing, 
you said that already, I know. It's, it's usually three closings, right? And then you fold up your papers like you're done. That's what Phil does every week. And he tortures us for like 10 more minutes. It says this, it says, the laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The world needs us. Our families need us. God needs us. The laborers are few. Who will live this kind of a life? Who will live this life? Who will live as a lamb among the wolves? Who will leave their wallet at home? Leave their strength in the top drawer and go be dependent upon someone else? Who will not only love those who don't love them, right? Who will love those who don't love them back? Who will return love for hurt? Who will? I don't know. I don't know. The labor is a few. But scripture says, pray ye therefore uh, that the Lord of the harvest, I pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, I pray as I hear with you today, I pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers I pray this first. I pray that he says, send the labor into your field. And I pray that God sends you somebody who will love you no matter what. I pray. That God will send you someone who love you when you don't love them back. I pray that God would send you someone who will love you when you don't feel like loving. I pray that God would send a laborer into your field. I pray. And then may it grow. May the 12 become the 72. Maybe you'll join the group. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe you'll join the group. Amen, everybody. Amen. The word of the Lord. Randy, you did such a fine job. We're going to ask you if you'll come back. And you too, kind sir, tag Why don't you come on up and lead us in song? Why don't you all stand? God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Man, you guys rocked that song there. <laughs> I was totally feeling that song. That was good. <laughs> Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Interdependence. I like that. Interdependence. Dad's like, am I hearing him right? What's he saying? <laughs> uh, but that's a good word, brother. That's a good word. Um, bear each other's burdens. In so doing, you fulfill the law of Christ. Didn't know Christ had a law. What's his law? He said he only listened to the voice of his father. That's the law of Christ. Which means I can't listen to other voices. It's only the voice of the Father. And the biggest voice I got is the voice inside my head. Can't listen to that voice. Only the voice of the Father. And spoiler alert, Revelation 22, you guys realize that's the last chapter of the book? God shares his throne. You know who he shares his throne with? Yeah, a lamb. A lamb. The lamb shares the throne with God. Amen? Amen. Let's go before our Heavenly Father. Lord, uh, as always, Lord, we are grateful for this house. Uh, Lord, we're grateful even that we get to worship you, Lord God, and get to sing and declare your goodness, Lord. We thank you for the joy that's in here today, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord God, that uh, you place it inside of our heart, Lord, that we be interdependent, Lord, that we do depend on one another, Lord God. And the truth is we want to depend on each other, Lord God. We want to be with one another, Lord God. There's fellowship, Lord God. There's unity, Lord God. There's strength comes from that, Lord. Lord, and help us to do that through greater love, Lord God, to open more doors, Lord, that that love be experienced, Lord, and let others feel that love, Lord. Let us be that light, Lord God. Send us that we'd be able to go and open the doors and, and love no matter what it is, Lord God. 
Because we know, Lord God, we know the true strength, Lord God. It's always in Christ Jesus, your son, Lord. So we thank you as always, Lord, for the day, for this family, Lord, and pray your blessings on all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.